back at it again with another Nerdy Bookish video. Happy October 1st, baby! I just, just hopped off my October 1st sprints. Oof, we gotta turn in rent. Ooh, I'm gonna check our book. Okay, let me try to multitask here. Okay, so. I'll take over. Y'all saw, saw I got up early, I got up at six. It wasn't too early, but it was early enough. And then I edited my video, there's Joey. Hey. Then I went on a two mile run. Happy Jan, yes. endorphins are endorphiny. Showered, went on sprints. And now we're off to his parents' house to go on a fucking boat. It's not gonna be all day. <sighs> Agaton, rent. Oh shit, that's not our address. Wow, our last rent check here. Yep. Okay, wait, I gotta. You should write like. Bye, bitches. Bye, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna do? Pick us up? What is the point of this? I'm just introing the vlog. Hi, hello. I started this book, The Year of the Witching. This is my oh, Patreon. God. This is my Patreon buddy read for October, and it's perfect for Black Aweenathon, which is hosted by my girl Brie from Lock. Petition. Pretty much all I got. I'm trying to write this check. I need to focus. Oh, knock knock, your order is here. My order for Black River Orchard by Chuck Wendig just got delivered. Fuck yeah. Enjoy this vlog, hopefully. I think it's just gonna be like a week. I'm not doing a reset vlog this month. <clears throat> this is the reset. Cause we can't, we can't like reset anything, okay? Look at, this place is in shambles. It's also banned books week. I was wearing this hat. I'm also wearing my Dracula shirt. It's a vibe. It's spooky year round, but like extra spooky in October. You know what I mean? I'll talk to y'all later. Probably do some B roll of the boat and shit and Harley and coffee we're probably gonna get, hopefully. And yeah, okay, bye. October 2nd. Um, I totally forgot to say that I'm technically kind of, kind of, participating in Dordaline's Patreon exclusive readathon. It's like an extended spooky smart bitch readathon that goes until the 7th. I just looked at the prompts yesterday and I know one of them is read a horror book written by a woman. I believe the year of the witching is technically also horror, right? That would make sense. Oh, I have to turn in rent, so I should probably leave soon. So I'm counting this for a lot of things, apparently. But I got to chapter six, page 54, and then Joey and I basically watched Stand By Me. I have never seen it. We did not even finish it, actually. We were literally sleepy by 9.10. We checked the time, it felt like 11 p.m. It was 9.10. We were like, how are we this tired before 9.30? It was ridiculous. But anyway, really liking this based on the first five chapters. It's so atmospheric, like her writing, even in House of Hunger, like it really just immediately takes you to the time period and setting that she is going for. This is set in like Puritan type of times, you know? I'm not sure what year exactly, but like in the fucking past. <laughs> it's easy to read. It's kind of fun to read because it's in such a, an old time period, you know? There's already been a couple lines of social commentary about like appearances and how basically society just judges people based on appearances and not anything else. Oh, she like naturally talks about getting your period, which is refreshing. I don't know. There's something about that that's just like making it known that it's a natural thing. It's not a disgusting thing. You know, like we women are so like trained and conditioned to think that the things our bodies do is disgusting. When authors normalize talking about it in like a productive way, then it makes it better for everybody. And then I got to page 49 of This Thing Between Us. I read most of it on the boat so I was like highly distracted but also just confused regardless because it's weird like I love second person it's narrated in second person for the most part I didn't really understand like where we were what we were doing I was kind of just going through the motions now I'm at the point where their version of Amazon and their version of Alexa are coming through and the main characters receiving these like weird packages the sci-fi aspect is definitely there I believe it's considered sci-fi horror that 
that's my verdict on that. I'm hoping, I don't know what I'm hoping anymore. I don't have a game plan. I'm hoping to finish the year of the witching this week. I just don't know when. Today, Joey and I are planning on going to Starbucks after work because we both have been trying to resist buying pumpkin cream cold brews and I was like, we deserve it. It's on me, let's go. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna read and then we're gonna go to Bath and Body Works buy some bathroom spray because we ran out and then go to Target for laundry detergent, like random shit like that. Okay, so that's what this Monday is gonna be. This morning, I got up at six. Well, 5.50ish, I woke up and then I got up at six and finished editing a video and then Canva was giving me troubles and wouldn't download my thumbnail. But eventually we got there and now it's uploading. So I'm so excited because it's been like 10 days since I uploaded on YouTube. It was during my like mini break. I was just working on Patreon stuff. I'm gonna go get my stuff ready for work and I'll talk to y'all after. I'm bringing both of those books to work with me. I gotta film my wrap up at some point too. I'm hoping to work out tonight as well somehow. I don't know when, I don't know where. I'll probably film my wrap up tomorrow. Sounds good. And basically the summer. Been getting pumpkin cream cold brews at 8 p.m. Because it's been over a week since we both had one. I told them this morning. You had one this morning? No. What? I told them in the vlog. Oh, you told them this morning. You said I had one this morning. I was like, oh. I had McDonald's frappe this morning. I'll try to coffee. I don't know. I did a workout. 25 minutes. Nothing. He made dinner. He made dinner. That's about it. I'm so excited to read. forever bow ties and books to me. I don't care. That's okay. <laughs> Not dead channeling. <laughs> Good morning, here is my pre-work update. I read a little over a hundred pages of The Year of the Witching last night. Our Starbucks date was super productive. Then Jesse and I streamed privately and that was less productive, but we both still read. I mean, it's still good. It definitely has some dark elements to it, which I'm enjoying, but I'm mostly here for the vibes. Like it's one of those books where like, it has such atmospheric writing that I don't even really care about the plot. There are some scenes that I'm like, Love it here, you know? But yeah, today after work, I am gonna go to Target to buy some laundry detergent and then Bath and Body Works. We were supposed to go yesterday. All that stuff that I said, yeah, we didn't do that. We just went to Starbucks because the timing was off since I tried to squeeze in a workout and then dinner and yeah. And then Sarah from Sarah Shells and I are gonna watch Love is Blind again. Just a couple episodes, like one or two, depending on the cliffhanger. And then we're gonna read as well. I also might make a pit stop to Barnes and Noble because it is Tuesday, it's October 3rd. Like the biggest release day of the month. Fuck, I gotta edit my October releases too. Shit, I might bring my laptop to work. I'm gonna need to grind during my lunch break. I will talk to y'all later. I'm gonna get me some coffee once again. I gotta go though. I hope I finish something today. I'm also listening to Monstilio. It's Books and Lala's Literally Dead Book Club pick this month and the live show is a Saturday. I don't know if I'm gonna go, but like if I wanted to watch it back, I wanna have the book done obviously and the audiobook's pretty good and the first chapter was wild and it just gets weirder after that. So I'm excited to finish that and it's a Hispanic author so perfect. I read none of this thing between us yesterday. I'm kind of not vibing with it but I'm gonna try to continue. I'm gonna push through since it is really short. I do want to read on my Kindle every now and then so. All right for realsies I'll talk to y'all later. Bye! Hey guys! 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 Hey
Hiya. We're currently in my mom's driveway and I just picked up a bunch of packages. So we're just gonna open them super quickly. Then I'm gonna go get some KFC for Joey and I. First book is our Unmuted and Unhinged Sprints book. We're gonna be reading Carney. It's a killer clown book, Halloween-y. Joey picked it. So we'll see how this goes. And I got some bat pajamas from Forever 21. The design, it's a whole set. Then we have a Pango order. Oh yeah, the fact that I forget what I buy is a problem. I got this literary fiction, messy 20s type of book. No idea what drew me to this. Oh, you know what? I saw the alternate cover that looks like the UK version of Cleopatra and Frankenstein and I saw them next to each other and I was like, oh, what's that book? I keep seeing it and I never really look into it and I am going to do a sad girl vlog soon. Then from Barnes and Noble, we got a chunky boy, Black River Orchard by Chuck Wendig. So I read the first 12 pages of this on the Amazon sample after hearing about it from one of my patrons, Hannah. Chuck Wendig wrote The Book of Accidents, which I have been intrigued by since I bought it when it came out in like 2020 or something and I have yet to read it but this I think has short chapters it's like a fantasy horror type of thing in a small town and there's this like orchard with these weird trees that give you like immortality or some shit like that I don't even know maybe not immortality you will become stronger more vital more yourself you will believe and then it's like some sinister shit so that sounds fun and creepy now we have another pango order this Amazon box oh crap I forgot what I got to be honest thank you so much for ordering Hope you enjoy this book. Wishing you love, light, and happiness. Oh, The House of Marion, because Jesse told me to buy it. Hopefully I like this. Yeah, this is the pretty one. If this world is made of glass, then I will dance with a hammer in my hand. That is cute. Pretty. Back looks like that. I love that YA books have been doing that lately. And then we have my fairy loot box. I think this is just making more of a mess than it needed to be, but okay. So I already knew what the book was. Here's a little thing. This is September's box. It's If I Have to Be Haunted by Miranda's Son. And I actually got a Night Galley arc for it from Penguin Teen, so thank you. But obviously gonna read the Fairy Loot edition. Ooh, Autumn Falls High School? Shut up. That is a good art print. I love that. Okay, it says, I'll haunt you for the rest of your life. You wouldn't dare try me. I kind of like the original cover better but these stenciled edges are cool. Ooh, glossy. Okay, sorry I'm not doing this much justice, but okay, this is pretty, pretty. I do like those end pages. I really love that this is also a BIPOC author. There's the alternate dust jacket. It's like glossy though. I like the matte of it. But yes, I will be reading this hopefully this month. I'm able to. I still have to read Bonesmith. I'm behind on my fairy loot books. Oh, also this is signed. Obviously it's a fairy loot edition. And yeah, that's that. I'll talk to y'all later. That's the haul. Bye. <laughs> empty ass shelves. Good morning. I have like five minutes before I have to leave for work, but figured I'd do this morning update because I haven't in a while because yesterday was rough. I basically had a mental breakdown from like, I don't know when it started, but I was like off all day. And then I finally just like broke down sobbing until like 1030 and then I fell asleep, woke up around like 3 a.m. because Joey was talking in his sleep and then fell asleep again, woke up at 4.50, got up at like 5.10, edited some of my video, made a thumbnail for a video that went up for early access on Patreon yesterday, worked on the next vlog that I have going up for y'all, and I read more of The Year of the Witching. I know, why is this taking me? Might as well call this Patreon buddy read vlog. <laughs> I'm almost done. I have 60 pages left. It's gonna happen today. We're gonna kick it up a notch. I have, hold on, pause, let me go get it. 
Okay, wow. <laughs> I have The Fox Maidens by Robin Ha. And this doesn't come out until February. My coworker let me read this copy. I'm gonna give it back to her because I don't need an arc of a graphic novel. It's a graphic novel by an Asian author. It's not really spooky. It's an arc and it's quick. You know, I haven't gone to the library except yesterday because I had to break my ban because I can't find The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy in any of these boxes. I checked most of like, I thought it was towards the top. I don't know. I couldn't find it. I tried really hard. I tried for like half an hour. Couldn't find it. And I need the book for Liv's Library's Patreon book club show early next month. So I'll be reading it at the end of this month. So I got it from the library. Joey said, it's okay. He's like, the only asterisk I have for your library ban is if you own the book, but you can't find it in boxes or like it's already packed away, whatever. So that's what I did. But anyway, graphic novels I usually get from the library. So I'm gonna try to squeeze this in before the end of this vlog. I'm probably gonna end this vlog Saturday night, maybe Sunday night so we can get more books in because I feel like I haven't done much <laughs> in this vlog so maybe Sunday night because I do have a concert we're gonna see the Wonder Years on Sunday I might just end it then I did finish a book yesterday I finished my first book of October on the 4th that is so unlike me I usually try to finish one on the first of the month for sure and then definitely by the second of the month but life's been fucking weird I also have to do my October bullet journal still but tonight the plan is to pack more start packing clothes so that's gonna be patreon content anyway let me tell you about the book i finished yesterday so i finished monstrilio monstrilio i can't roll my r's so it's hard i have to try to like say it the american way but i don't remember the author's name it's like gerard cordova something like that i gave this three stars it was gonna be like a high four for a long time and then the audiobook narrator switched because the perspective switched from the mom the unhinged mother to the dad and then there was like a lot of sex in the book for what i i just didn't i don't think we needed that in a horror you know I mean, some of it was pretty decently done, but like otherwise, I was like, that's my bookmark. It's also my alarm going off. Sorry if you can hear all this outside noise, but now it's 8.30. Anyway, so I did not like the perspective switch. I didn't like the narrator switch. I don't like male narrators usually for the most part because it's just not pleasant to listen to sped up for most male narrators because like obviously their voices are deeper. So it like sounds mumbly and it's hard to listen to. So I didn't enjoy that, but I also like wanted more of the unhinged mother going through grief, you know, like grief horror is something else so I wanted more of that if it was from her perspective the entire time it probably could have been a four star I mean the first half was definitely much much better than the second half it was creepy it wasn't where I thought it was gonna be at all it also had parts about like relationships crumbling because of this thing that was happening to their son that's all I can pretty much say but I'm gonna try to attend Kayla's literally dead book club live show on Saturday we'll see what they all think of it I didn't know I kind of forgot did I know no, I don't know, but it was available on Hoopla. I didn't even like think about it being a literally dead book club pick. It just worked out that way. So I have one book done so far in this vlog. Hopefully two books by the end of the night. And then I'm gonna start The Fox Maidens. I might try to squeeze in You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Barron. But The Scarlet Alchemist, I know I'm gonna love it, so I keep putting it off. I just don't know what my brain is ready for, and I wanna be like fully present when I'm reading The Scarlet Alchemist. You know what I mean? Who knows where this is gonna go, but for now, definitely gonna get this in this vlog so y'all have my thoughts in fucking October even though it comes out in February. It's about a nine-tailed fox. Wow, I'm also reading Shanghai Immortal that has a nine-tailed fox. I haven't read Wicked Fox yet though. It says tackles important timely themes of feminism, bodily autonomy, and generational trauma. Perfect for readers of The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, Daughter of the Moon Goddess, and Girls of Paper and Fire. I loved Girls of Paper and Fire. So this is in black and white because it's an art. We'll see how this goes but The Year of the Witching. Let me just talk about it for like 30 more seconds. I liked the first hundred pages or so and then I'm just bored to be honest This is probably gonna be a low three because there are you know witch burnings and witchy vibes Like I said before it's very atmospheric writing You're really like taken into this time period and just setting in general But there's also this nasty birthing scene that was so unnecessary like I just didn't need it. So I do prefer House of Hunger to this for sure. Like I said, 60 more pages. So I'm not gonna bring my laptop to edit during lunch. I'm going to read during my lunch break today. I think I'm gonna get a pumpkin cream cold brew. Starting tomorrow, the weather is supposed to be like 60s and below. So I also switched to the audiobook for this thing between us by Gus Moreno. Still like trying to match it up with my Kindle just in case I want to switch back. The audiobook's pretty good. I don't know what's going on really, but I'm here for whatever gonna get thrown my way. So that 
that one's probably gonna be three stars too. Everything I'm reading is just mediocre and I need a five star book soon, but it'll come, it's October. This happens every fucking year. I know I've been talking for like 10 minutes now, but this happens every year where I'm like so excited for October and then I get so overwhelmed that I barely read anything compared to my other months and it's just a whole mess. But anyway, I gotta go to work. I hope this long update makes up for the day and a half that I barely updated. I lied, I definitely got a brown sugar shake and espresso with pumpkin cream cold foam because I'm starting to like that more than the pumpkin cream cold brew to be honest, but yeah. I'm just at the drive-thru. I was listening to this thing between us and it's getting sad. It's also grief horror, so I don't know what is up with me picking up random books with grief horror, but it has second person. It talks about his dead wife. It's a lot, so okay, I gotta Oh my god, I wish I was recording. I mean, this has happened to me a lot of times and I don't think I've ever done it actually. I should pay it forward, but someone in front of me paid for my coffee. Wow. And I just refilled my Starbucks card too, so there's that. I was literally like driving to the window as I was like right when I turned off the camera to say I gotta go. Oh my god, look at these trees. They're changing. <laughs> They're changing. This is my favorite part of my drive to work because I get to watch these trees change. Oh my god, I'm so excited. to go on a Spanto poutine adventure. We're driving 45 minutes. Because last time, oh, only Patreon saw that vlog. Yeah. We went to this pumpkin farm like an hour away and then on our way back, we stopped at a bookstore and then we came across this fire station themed, 51. themed, no, it's called Station 51. Yeah, it's a firehouse themed restaurant and you, we tried, what? Sorry, did you get your hat? No, I didn't bring it. <laughs> a firefighter gave me a hat at work for a photo and yeah, anyway. We tried poutine for the first time and it was so fucking good. I never even heard of it until we went. I just didn't really know what it was, but I've heard of it because I went to Toronto years ago and everyone was talking about it and it was on every menu ever and I just didn't know what it was. In my head, I kept picturing plantains. I feel like I said this in a vlog already. I think you said it in that vlog. Or maybe I said it on the live show. I don't know. But we're gonna go there and we're gonna forget about our responsibilities. Actually, I'm gonna read on this car ride. I brought my headphones, like the passenger princess that I am, <laughs> and my book. Because I have 45 pages left of Year of the Witching. Oh, this thing between us. I was listening to it at work. I have about an hour of it left in the speed that I'm listening to. And Wait, I shouldn't have said that. Cut that out, Jan. Oh, Something really fucking tragic happened and I almost cried. It's a sad fucking book. Oh, it's a sad fucking book. So just, just so y'all know, trigger warning. I should be able to finish that tomorrow unless I have extra energy tonight and pack a little or put laundry away. And I can listen to my audiobook, but right now we're gonna try to finish The Year of the Witching. I'm wearing my serial killer documentaries and chill sweatshirt because we're going on a fancy schmancy date. <laughs> it's golden hour, baby. Can't even see Joe. Nope, I'm too golden. I'm too golden. I don't wanna let him listen to Crime Junkie now. Bye. Bye. but I just wanted to update this vlog before I switch to the Patreon only video that I finished the year of the witching. Don't even know where the dust jacket is. I think it's on my desk over there. Gave it three stars as anticipated. It was just so boring. The ending, there was literally a point where I was like, can someone just fucking burn already? Like, why are we going back and forth being martyrs, fucking trying to sacrifice ourselves? Like, can someone just literally burn? Because I was getting sick of it. It was annoying. Characters were annoying. Not even, I didn't even care enough to 
be annoyed by the characters. The epilogue was cool and it did set itself up for a good sequel that apparently she's not writing anymore so that's great but I mean I probably wouldn't have read it anyway. The end got just like repetitive. It was like repetitive and nothing was happening but then everything was trying to happen all at once and it was just like I don't know why I keep wanting to say convoluted. I don't even know if that makes sense in this context but I just want to use the word. So let me use the word. I knew I wasn't gonna like the ending because Jesse said I wouldn't like the ending. Well that they didn't like it but I was prepared. But I didn't think the ending and me not liking it started halfway through the book you know. Now I'm missing all the footage of Joey packing his books so I'm gonna switch SD cards now. Oh I also read more of this thing between us. Wow I am better than you. Look at that. Look how perfect. It's so sad. It was so sad and it was so like intensely gory for no reason and it came out of nowhere. It might have just gained a star for me. It could possibly be four stars now after reading that part, but we'll see because it is still like confusing and discombobulated. Sorry for this bad lighting and messy background. I'm just gonna go. From far away she looks so good Grew up in the same neighborhood that's out of rough salt in the wound Spend a few hours on the reservoir Never broke a bone so I'm gonna try hard To prove you wrong That I'm not who I used to It's like 53 degrees or whatever, but it is cold in my apartment. Cold! It's like 67 degrees in here because Joey has the windows open and everything. So I'm all cozy. I'm reading my graphic novel, but I did finish a book today. I finished This Thing Between Us. I gave it three stars. Are we shocked? It could have been four stars if it kept the same energy as when, fuck is the dog's name? I, Brimley? Is that the dog's name? When Brimley was in it and he was explaining what the thing was in this house, like this wall or whatever, and all the things that were going on. If it kept that energy, because he was like explaining it to his wife's mom and everything, and then it lost me. And the ending was just like, I don't even know, I kind of just blacked out. It didn't give me anything else that really grasped my attention, I guess. So yeah, three stars. I'm probably just too stupid for the book. <laughs> it's whatever. I'm glad I read it because I've stared at the cover since it basically came out. So what's that? I'm also glad I didn't purchase the book. But yeah, I am now 74 pages into The Fox Maidens. I'm definitely seeing the feminist elements already. She's basically super underestimated being a girl, female assassin or whatever. I'm not obsessed with the plot nor the art style or anything. I'm just kind of, this is one of the books that I'm reading to read, like just to gain my momentum, you know? I also read the Amazon sample of You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight and it gripped me from the start so I will be trying to read that. I'm in the mood for a 24-hour readathon but like when was the last time I successfully did that? Sometime last year? I don't even know. We'll probably get energy drinks later. Joey's gonna make chili. He's taking down bookshelves right now which I'll talk about in my Patreon moving vlog. This is the vibe today. If we don't get energy drinks I'll probably make a hot cup of coffee which probably won't help me stay up much longer than I would have without coffee but nevertheless I'm gonna try my best to stay up. In this vlog I still want to finish A Fox Maiden. You're not supposed to die tonight. Those are the goals and then maybe also try to push through Shanghai Immortal since that's also a BIPOC author. Look at me actually sticking to the theme of this vlog. Like what? Crazy concept. You know like a You're never taking me alive so complex and I know I Chili baby! It's after dinner. It's like 8 o'clock now. Joey just left and came back with energy drinks. So we are ready to stay up. I'm now on page 222 of The Fox Maidens. This is taking me way longer than it needs to be because I keep getting distracted and I'm like, I'll finish it. It's a graphic novel. And then I like freaking drag, right? I keep like thinking of other books that I want to read that aren't by BIPOC authors, even though I'm liking, like I'm liking You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight. And I know it'll feel so good when I read The Book Eaters because that's also by a BIPOC author. Next week though, I am planning on reading 
some dark romance, dark fantasies. <laughs> this book. It's probably gonna be a three star. Nothing about it is really captivating me. I mean, we're finding things out about like the lore of the nine-tailed fox. Honestly, it's kind of hard to distinguish what's like actual lore versus what's specific to this book and this world or story or whatever. But either way, it is fascinating once we get the backstory of her turning into the nine-tailed fox or whatever, and then like what she has to do in order to accomplish certain things she wants to do. Yeah, I don't want to give too much away because, it, you know, it comes out in February. So, I mean, I'm not attached to any of the characters. I'm finding that, like, long graphic novels like this, even, like, manga, I can't do. I'm more, like, short story or, like, quick, fast-paced. This is very drawn out. Like, Tokyo Ghoul, it's, you know, a 14-volume series, but it's very to the point and there's a lot of action. And then the action in this, I'm not interested in the fight scenes. I'm just not. I like the lore part, the fantastical parts, and the kind of gory-ish parts. It's gonna be another three star. This is just the vlog of three star BIPOC author books, which is <laughs> not a cute title, but we'll figure something out. Let's hope you're not supposed to die tonight doesn't disappoint. And let's hope I can squeeze maybe one more in, which is gonna be difficult because, you know, all my books are packed, so. Metamorphosis! Freaking Hilary Duff. This made me think of Hilary Duff. Hi, I'm still here with another update. Just finished The Fox Maidens. I'm gonna give it three stars. The ending was good. It got a gasp out of me, okay? It just wrapped up way too quickly and it just like felt a little bit redundant. Once you know what she's supposed to do to get things done, they just kept saying it like three more times. Like, I feel like that was unnecessary because it's a pretty like intense, significant thing that you wouldn't forget you know maybe twice mention it but like any more than that it's too much it is hard to appreciate the art style when it's in black and white but the final copy is going to be in full color there is a section in the beginning where it's full color and it's gorgeous but yeah so three stars obviously a quick read there's a little bit of a sapphic romance in there which i wasn't expecting so that was cool. Decent experience, I guess. Now I'm gonna continue. You're not supposed to die tonight. Just for a little bit until Sarah gets off sprints. So then we can watch an episode of Love is Blind. Y'all know Sarah. She stays up late as fuck. So she's gonna hold me accountable. I don't know if I'm trying to stay up all night, you know, because that's a little ambitious. But I do want to get a good chunk of this done. Maybe like 100 pages of this book at least. You know, it'd be grand if I can finish it because it is so quick. That's, again, very ambitious. Let's do it do it <laughs> it's not as fun without joey but he's playing video games oh. nothing if you didn't know this book is about this camp thing where they stage out these like serial killer scenes our main character just got the role of the final girl she's been working here for years every summer and at the end of the game she like debriefs the people that like not debriefs because the people know that they're in the game right they have to sign like a 33 page waiver or some shit because these actors can touch you and like push you over and things like that but yeah so at the end of the game she's the one who's like you've survived the night at camp mirror lake whatever i think eventually it turns real like the serial killer actually becomes a serial killer or like someone becomes an actual serial killer, you know? Should be fun, should be cute, short and sweet. I've been meaning to get to this since it came out and Sid from Sid Bookworm got it for me for my birthday. So it's now October, it's time. Plus it fits black a thon woo! <laughs> I think this is the latest I've ever updated a vlog in oh my like. God, it's one forty-five. It's one forty-five. Oh my God, we're gonna regret this so much. Why? We're not doing anything. I know. What? <laughs>
Well, at noon, we have unmuted and unhinged sprints. I realized I think I'm gonna end this vlog tomorrow instead of Sunday because I'm definitely <clears throat> gonna be finishing You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight and then also Carney, which is not gonna be in this vlog. It's gonna be in sprints, but I'll say my thoughts in this too, I guess. And that's like more than enough books. Like I, I like to have three books per vlog and I think this is my fifth one. So I don't need to go till Sunday. I'll just focus on the book eaters. So then I'm not doing two vlogs at the same time. We're just trying to protect the mental. It's 145. We just got off sprints with Sarah. We watched two episodes of, well, an episode and a half of Love is Blind, and then we read for like two hours, and it was great. And now I'm on page 124, chapter 10. In four pages, I'll have exactly 100 pages left. Honestly, still kind of kicking, because this energy drink did something for me. I'm just like, I know I should be asleep, so like my body's telling me I should go to sleep, but my mind is like, I still want to read this damn book. My body, my body. It's really good. It's creepy. It's funny. Like, I was not expecting to laugh this much. Like, I'm literally laughing out loud. I have green tabs for funny, red tabs for creepy, and then dark green tabs for, like, relatable or good writing or whatever. Yeah, it's really good. Right now, it's probably sitting at... I mean, it could potentially be a five. Not gonna lie. But right now, it's at a four just because it's just... I guess simple writing. It's not very plot driven and I'm more of a character driven type of reader. I think that's the best explanation for it. But I think it's gonna be like four stars. I cannot see this being three stars unless the ending sucks, unless the banter or whatever gets worse. But I actually like the friend group in this. Like they work for me. Can I visualize any of them besides the main character because she's on the cover? Nope. But I'm having a good time. Yeah, creepy shit is fucking happening. I'm like, wow, she's really doing the damn thing for when you end chapters on like that pack a punch type of sentence, you know? She's doing great. Although these chapters could be a lot shorter. Because why am I on page 125 and it's only chapter 10? Please. But I'm glad this is flying as anticipated. I'm in the mood for romance. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for horror right now, which is awful. Like I can do like dark gothic fantasy type of vibes, but right now I really just want easy romance to read. So that'll be the vlog after this. Anyway, I'm gonna go do this, read a little bit more until I pass out and then I'll talk to y'all in the morning because my, what is this body part called? My hand is cramping. <laughs> Good night, night Joey. It's been a while, it's been a long day Without you, my friend Hi! We just finished Ash Eric Moore I guess this breaks my BIPOC author theme But it doesn't actually count because I wasn't It's not for this vlog, you know Um, we gave it one star Awful It was, it wasn't extreme horror It was extremely boring <laughs> Extremely lazy <laughs> Extremely <laughs> awful Extremely lazy for sure It was just not Like, good. it had potential Like, it could've definitely been a longer book and got into way more detail. Yeah. Like, and, like there was even literally like, the a gory scenes weren't all that great. Like there was literally a part where like, oh, she really wanted to like chop his dick off, but she didn't have time, so she's moving on. And it's like, why don't you do it? Like do it. Chop the man's dick off. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. It's just a brief little thing. And it fit Jordaline's readathon prompt for a book under 200 pages, a horror book under oh. 200 pages, and an indie author. So Oh look at that. Killing it. <laughs> Ow! Oh, what are you Ow, doing? I punched my chair. Okay, we're gonna have some Halloween scary, creepy, eerie content because we're gonna go to Ghoulish Mortals, which is this Halloween themed store. You guys have been there before. You guys have been there before. <laughs> and so have we. But I gotta change into something creepier, Halloweenier. Well, I'm wearing my merch, merch link down below. <gasps> I'm also using my Patreon exclusive mug. It says Big Lair Energy. But yeah, I'm gonna put some eye makeup on and then we're gonna roll out. And I'm gonna finish You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight in the car because it's like a 40 minute drive. And we're gonna end that vlog, end this vlog there. Can you not be weird? I found my autumn enthusiast sweatshirt from Darling Desi's shop and I'm wearing my Sam earrings. <laughs> They're cute. Can't wait to tell. Oh, this one's the bitten one. Cute. Um, the not both bit. Hi, we just got here and apparently, apparently there's some like block party or something. We, we just drove into Salem. Literally. There's so, like festivities going on over here and we had no idea. It's probably gonna be packed in there. Everything's fucked. By Mark Manson. 
<laughs> That's a book. Yeah, I got that. Oh. I finished You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight as promised, and I'm gonna give it a three. Will I ever read a highly rated book ever again? I don't know. Stay tuned to find out. I wanted at least one four star book in this, okay? It was four stars in the first half. Everything I read yesterday, I was like, I'm convinced, four stars. And then there's a twist involving an animal, okay? But not in the sense that you're thinking, whatever, there's an animal involved. Werewolf. Sure. And it was just trying so hard to be unique. Like, I would have been happier if they just rolled with the whole like ripping off movies you know classic slasher movies like twist the little serial killer a little bit like you know but it wasn't okay that's all i'm gonna say because i don't want to like in terms of this part but then there was one page at the very end before the epilogue that got me i was like <gasps> And then I was like, oh, that was a little twist. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Too bad it's the very last page before the epilogue, right? And then the epilogue sucked and it was cheesy. And the explanations of everything was cheesy and it was just not fun. It was not fun. That's that, it tried, I tried. We're all trying here. <sighs> But that's probably gonna be the last book of this vlog. But I'm gonna end this vlog with some scary Halloween store footage. So enjoy. Maybe I'll do a little bit more reading, who knows? I did bring my Kenny and my Joey. <laughs> All right, let's buy a cute art print or something. I hope we can find like another one that by that same artist that we have for Michael and- But like who would they even do, Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger or like- Ghostface? Yeah, Ghostface would be like, mm. I have a sweatshirt that has that. All right, let's go face the people. God. Pray for us. Yeah. Tell me why it smells like warped tour. That's provocative or what, but <laughs> <laughs> there are kids here. <laughs> Unboxing, Joey's coming. Hello. Oh, no. Why is he leaf blowing? Oh, is this Mina and the Undead? Hell yeah. Mina and the Undead. I was gonna. Oh. Hello? 
the border. This is per Jody's recommendation, so I'm gonna try to squeeze this in during Vampathon, hopefully. What is this? Is this a medical bill? FML. What did I order from Pango? Oh yeah, and don't look back. So this is a new release. This literally came out last Tuesday. And this was a Jesse recommendation. And I found it on Pango already for like 12 bucks, 10 bucks. So super excited. I talked about this in my most anticipated October releases. I literally cannot film here ever. I hate being an adult. Next we have my book of the month pick. I talked about these in my October releases as well. I'll link it down below. I hate that they used, oh, I guess it matches the lettering. Oh, I got cool. my darling girl and the unmaking of June Fair. Oh, I didn't realize she had a bloody hand. Oh. Boo, it's me, a reading break. Cute. And then from Barney's and Nobly's, what did I buy? Oh yeah, I remember. Eh, I'm weak. I got The Forest Demands It's Due. I believe I talked about this in my October releases as well. I think I talked about all of these on my October releases. Yeah, I did. Midnight is the Darkest Hour, and then the Jordan Peele edited book. I'm gonna read this so soon. Oh no, there's a lot of words on each page. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there's texture on the cover. Love. So we got some black authors for Black Oweenathon. Hell yeah. Nope, that's not the black author. This one. Forest demands it's due. It's a YA. I am stocked up for Black Oweenathon. My mom's not home, per usual, so we're probably just gonna go home. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll end the vlog. Or should we just end it here? I think I'm just gonna end the vlog here. Why not? Change of scenery. So we actually didn't know, but apparently there was a scarecrow festival weekend thing and we went on the busiest day of that whole, that town of the funny. whole year. There were so many people. Yeah, it was disgusting, but honestly it made the drive worth it, so whatever. Is there a scarecrow emoji? What else did I do in this vlog? Oh, I finished Monstrillo, which I gave three stars. Good. The Year of the Witching, I gave three stars. Fox Maidens, I gave three stars. This thing between us, I gave three stars. Carney, I gave one star. <clears throat> and you're not supposed to die tonight, I gave three stars. What was that, six books? Six mediocre ass books. If you made it to the end of this video, put this emoji <laughs> for three, okay. you know, for three, the okay emoji, but like three, cause three stars, there's oh. so many three stars. Yeah, or a clown emoji to represent Carney. Sure, why not, whatever. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all had a great day. Stay safe and stay scary always. And I'll see you on my next video, bye.